Hello. My regular viewers will know that I've been working on this Philips VR2324 V2000 format video recorder. Uh, well, to be honest, I'm a little bit bogged down in it. And later on, I'll go through some of the uh, progress I've made and why I'm slightly stuck with it. But right now, a different subject. Some time ago, I worked on a Betamax video recorder an NTSC one that would uh, play beta one speed tapes. And I thought, great, that's really good. So any customer who sends me high speed running, short running time, beta one uh, tapes from America, I can handle them. And a customer did send me some beta one tapes and I couldn't handle them because they were super beta. So that was a bit of a nuisance. What I'd really like, of course, would be a Super Beta video recorder from America, because I've never sold in this country, an NTSC one. But they're extremely rare. I've got pretty much no chance of ever finding one of those. Special delivery. Oh, hello. Uh, what would we have here? Aha. The contents of this huge box are a non-working Super Beta video recorder. So uh, let's uh, open this up and see what we have. So what do we have here? The box itself is from a uh, hi-fi system of some sort, but inside I'm hoping to find a nice Super Beta. First thing I find is, well, some discs there with manuals, but most interesting, this uh, integrated remote commander, RMAV3000. Uh, which presumably can drive this machine. It might be already configured to do so. Interesting remote. And here's the machine, which has, of course, a USA power, power cable. I don't know if it unplugs. No, it appears to be captive, so that's a little bit of a nuisance. What a grand looking machine. So the construction appears very similar to the SLHF100 uh, Beta Hi Fi. Uh, this all seems quite familiar. Right, uh, let's uh, power it up and uh, see what it does. Right, I've set up my isolation transformer over there to give me about 110 volts. Let's uh, power it up and see if we get anything. Oh, that's interesting. The display's a bit dim. I don't know if you can see that. And it made some startup noises. I think we'll actually take the cabinet off before we even insert a tape. Just power it down again. I'm going to use one of these Pro-X tapes because you can see both spools on them. I don't even know if there's anything recorded on this, and anyway, this is an NTSC machine. I'll just see if I can get it working mechanically. I'm going to set you up so you can look down on the deck and get a better view. Okay, anyone who's ever seen me working on Sony Beta video recorders before of this sort of vintage will be completely familiar with this loading arrangement here. This has got a um, planetary gear and there's a solenoid which is involved in activating both the pinch roller and also switching this over between loading and unlacing on the cassette carriage. So that's uh, nothing unfamiliar there. This is the head drum of course. Sounds a little It's a little noisy, but I think it's okay now. Righto, let's power it up. That's the take-up spool spinning. Oh, that was the solenoid. Switch on, insert tape. That's odd. So it didn't go through the lacing. That's unusual. How odd. So it knew it had a tape in there. And something's timing out. Is it unable to complete the uh, lacing mechanically, jammed perhaps? What I'll do is I'll put it in, I'll power it down, and then I'll see if I can manually lace this up. I have to remember which way to turn it. 
it may be struggling to lace up there's a gear at the bottom of this stack which splits I believe so that might be our problem we'll uh, look into that that's a strange operation it's slowly winding forward why is it doing that Oh, it's not unable to eject now. Oh, it's just laced up. I wasn't expecting that. That was a weird thing to do. It's and now it's unlaced again. Let's select fast forward when it's in its laced position. No. That doesn't feel very happy at all. Mechanically, it's looking okay, but there's something else I've noticed. Are they all eights? It looks like everything's illuminated. Doesn't it? It looks like every single segment is lit. That's never right. I pressed eject and it is. No, it's trying. It's taking notice of the eject button, then failing to eject. I was just checking to see if the head spins, because very often when the head doesn't spin, that's a Hall effect sensor. But it's taking notice of the eject, but not managing to do an eject. Behaviour is very strange. I don't think there is a mechanical problem with the mechanism anyway. There might be a sensor problem. Hmm. I think we need to be looking at the power supply because this is behaving very strangely. Yes, I will be looking at the power supply first. Right, well the power supply is here. It's not too hard to get to I believe. Uh, so I think I'll just take it out and do a, a cold check of capacitors and what have you in there and see if we learn anything. Let's measure a few voltages before I actually take the power supply out. So pin 1 of connector 4, we should start uh, with 16 volts. 16 volts, uh, that seems low. That seems very low. Let's uh, power cycle it a moment. damaging my tape. Now that is low isn't it? Oh it's 13 and a half, that's way off. Pin 2 should be um, minus 30 volts roughly. Pin 3 should be 5 volts, yep good enough. 4 is ground, 5 is 9 volts, close enough. Yep that seems to be holding it. Then we have ground and 12 volts. So it's really that first voltage, that uh, 16 volt line seems to be really way off and too far off in my opinion. Then looking at the pins on connector 5, uh, the hi-fi switch, I don't know why that's on there, then ground, timer switch, 5 volts, yeah, minus 20, Close enough. Power cont, it says. Uh, then we've got some AC voltages, which I can't easily measure here. But that uh, very first voltage, that 16 volt, is all over the place. So that's a sign that things are not well in the power supply. Looking at the schematic, that 16.5 volt line is a feed to the regulator STK5441. It's come straight off a bridge rectifier and uh, smoothing capacitor, so I'll definitely uh, check those out. Okay, we have uh, pretty good access to the power supply, so uh, let's check out the capacitors and go from there. Right, I went through the power supply 
checking capacitors and couldn't find anything that was out of spec or significantly out of spec. Uh, I looked for dry joints, couldn't find any dry joints that were significant. I did a little bit of resoldering. So uh, we didn't get anywhere with the power supply. I think that low 16 volts uh, is more of a symptom than a cause. But let's just um, power it up again and confirm that nothing's changed. Right, it's just the same. Randomly lacing up when I don't want it to. Behaving very strangely. I think I've just seen something that's not good. Uh, I believe it's lace up is no longer working properly. So let me power it up. One side is lacing up and the other side isn't. This is bad. Ah. Uh. That's not good at all. So it's become mistimed or it's not driving one side of the rack. Uh, that's going to mean I have to strip this down and find out why the drive is not getting through to both sides. So even if it has an electronic fault, it now has a mechanical fault too. One of the things I was thinking of is how does it detect when it's got to the end of the lace up position? I know how it detects when it's got to the beginning of the lace-up, you know, when it's unlacing. It actually uses a uh, end sensor. It's got a little mag uh, piece of metal that it swings around uh, next to the uh, coil on this side, uh, which is the end stop sensor. So it's like, like the um, solenoid that's doing two jobs. It's doing uh, drive uh, direction and also pinch roller. The end sensor is being used for two jobs. It's being used for detecting end of unlace as well as end of tape. But I don't know how it detects when it's fully laced. There must be a sensor somewhere or a switch. Uh, but it's not getting there at all now because the drive is not working on that side of the loading ring. So that mechanical problem needs fixing. Oh dear. OK, I'm going to leave it there for this video and I will talk briefly about the V2000 machine. I'd had problems with the power supply on the VR2324. There's a 21 volt line that comes to a transistor here which is a prior to a regulator and it was missing because these two fuses were blown. I replaced them with slightly lower value ones but still should have worked and the 21 volt line arrived but still we didn't get a 12 volt line on the output of the regulator because it was uh, apparently in a trip condition. And after I'd worked on it for some time, that trip condition actually disappeared, but we still didn't get the 12 volt line because there was an off signal from somewhere. And I took everything out, put it on the desk, was working on it, switched it on, and then the whole machine seemed to spring to life. It ejected. Okay, so I put it back in here and then it was dead again. But the 21 volt line was still there, but the off signal was arriving. And the off signal there is derived from here. And apparently it seems to be something to do with DTF. So if the dynamic track following circuit's not working, it switches the 12 volt line off. I was gonna demonstrate some of this to you, but now it's blown one of those fuses again. So, as you can see, I'm just going around in circles here. I would really like to know why the, the a signal, which appears to be a, a signal used for the dynamic track following, gets routed through to the power supply to give it the option of switching off. I think that's a very strange bit of circuitry. If anybody's familiar with these machines, please let me know what's going on. Um, and I need probably to get some of the correct fuse rating here for the uh, 21 volt feed to the regulator so it doesn't keep popping the fuses. So um, 
I also have been getting weird results such as when the 20 volt, 21 volt line was not here, then the displays would light up. But now the 21 volt line's not there, the displays are not lighting up. It's extremely inconsistent. It could be connector problems, could be capacitor trouble, though every capacitor I've checked so far has been good. So uh, I am at a loss as to where to go here because every time I try to study a problem another problem pops up or it blows some fuses and I just keep going around in circles. It's an extremely chaotic deck and I had been warned by some people in the comments when I first started working on this that these machines are awful to work on and now I'm starting to really see that. I have replaced the fuse that failed with a 1.25. I've managed to find one. Uh, so we should have 21 volts at this point here when I power up. Right. But nothing else. So when I switch off, you get a little kick from the motor there as the uh, 12 volt line appears momentarily during the power down. And this appears to be because there's a, a line in here which is power on off which is coming from DTF somewhere deep in the deck. So we need to know why the um, signal on 5F2 which comes from the DTF circuit is telling the machine to switch off and has that got any bearing on why the displays aren't working? So you can see why we're a little bogged down here. <laughs> the V2000, I'm chasing my tail here it's got a very strange circuit and I'm getting different symptoms all the time. Uh, the beta machine, well that was giving some different symptoms too, but it clearly has both electronic and mechanical faults. All I can really do at the moment is see if I can work out what's wrong mechanically, get the lacing working again, and then try to study why it's doing the weird things it's doing. I suspect there may be more than one fault. So, do join me later as we work on those and other things. Bye for now.